It's a special edition of our first NBC Bank video update. Lenny Van Gilder, Ken Trahan with you. It is prep football playoff time. The brackets come out on Sunday. We are getting set for round one in nine classes and divisions. We could sit here for the next hour and talk about this, but we're not going to quite take it through an hour. Before we get into the analysis, Ken, let's immediately tell the folks two games you can watch this week on SportsNola.com right here. Our prep football coverage presented by First NBC Bank. Friday night at 7, it will be the Class 5A matchup between Covington and Hanville. Two great running backs. Should be an outstanding game. Uh, and that one down in Booty. And then Saturday at 6, we will have... Archbishop Rummel hosting Jesuit in the first round of the Division I playoffs. That will also be on WGSO 990 AM. Ken, you and Rick Gailey and Easton Roth will have the call of that one. It will be Ken Berthelot and Wade Kaiser on the call Friday night. So that business out of the way, let's get to it. Let's uh, let's start, if we will, in the in the non-select Class 5A. 32 teams in, in all of the non-select brackets. Well, there's 30 in Class 1A. But again, there's five rounds that we've got to get through. It takes four wins to get to the Dome. Um, top seeds, favorites, the, 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 the games that you're really looking at uh, in terms of uh, outstanding matchups and potential upsets here in Class 5A this week. Well, I'm looking at my pairing sheet, so I'm sure you will indulge me in that regard. But certainly Destrahan undefeated, a lot of skill across the board, and they had to replace their quarterback early in the season when Cohen Grigny went down and J.R. Blood's done a great job. They have Division One players all over the place at skill positions. The question is the schedule, and it, was it tough enough to toughen them up? I think Steve Robichaux is accustomed to having his team here, and I think they'll be fine. Uh, certainly, you have to take a serious look at West Monroe and who they are, what their program is, what they've accomplished this year. It's a good team. There's no question in my mind they have a definitive chance uh, to win in that division. A Ponchatoula, a uh, really good football team under Hank Tierney, but they're facing a second-round matchup with Acadiana. These two keep running into each other year after year, and they played in the regular season, and it was a classic, too, so no surprise there. I'd keep an eye on Landry Walker. This is an extremely talented football team that's really, really gifted. Hanville is playing good football. They're skilled offensively as well, uh, and Barb is a team that I think has a chance to make a run based upon the skill level they have. As for best matchup in the class, I think the 16-17, the Mandeville at Thibodeau game is a great matchup. Mandeville beat him at Mandeville last year in the first round. This one's at Thibodeau, but a Meek Robinson is out with a shoulder injury for Thibodeau, and he's a special player. It's interesting. We've got the the Covington Hanville game. Covington beat Mandeville last week. Mm-hmm. Hanville beat Thibodeau. Yeah. So that that's you know just one of those quirks, if you will, in the in in the schedule. What was interesting to me in looking at that bracket before we move on to four A is the top quarter of the bracket is, with the exception of Houghton, who's playing Eric, is all Southeast Louisiana teams. So unless Houghton pulls off three upsets you're assured of one of those teams from Southeast Louisiana being on to the semifinals in, 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 that, in that portion of the bracket. Now in 4A, a lot of local interest, obviously, with the seasons at Carr, McDonough, 35 have had. They potentially have a collision course in the semifinal. Of course, the number one seed there is Neville. No one likes rematches, and I detail them all at sportsnoah.com. 16 rematches in the first round of games that happened during the regular season. That's a bit absurd, isn't it? But in terms of 4A, can we just go ahead and fast forward to Neville and Carr in the Dome? I mean, I don't see anybody getting in the way. I just don't think anybody's as good as these two teams. I am of the opinion right now that they're the two best teams in the state of Louisiana in any classification. And I think you saw evidence of that with the way Carr played against St. Paul's on the road, against Brother Martin, against Landry Walker, and the way Neville handled Evangel in the battle on the border because Evangel is clearly one of the favorites in Division I. So I think they're the two best teams, and I fully expect they're going to be in the Dome. Best matchup, I think the 19th seed LaGrange at the 14th seed North DeSoto is a great matchup and upset special. LaGrange has been in very tough this year. They played a very difficult schedule, lost to Notre Dame and Evangel. So they've been in tough, so I like their chances on the road in that game. So we move on to 3A. The the local interest comes out of the River Parishes with St. James Lutcher. And then, of course, you head uh, you know, a, a, up I-55, and you've got Amid, who is always a contender there. Your thoughts on the 3A bracket? Well, I, I don't think there's a lot of surprises here. West Feliciana has earned their way there again to be the top seed. Uh, listen, they've been knocking on the door the last couple of years. It's a really good football team. They beat Parkview Baptist at Parkview Baptist, which really opened my eyes. Uh, that's a terrific win. In terms of the team that clearly – could upset the apple cart. It's a meet. They are loaded 
Athletically, I think they might be the most talented team in the class. You can't uh, discard Lutcher. It's a good football team with an outstanding quarterback. Uh, so certainly, I think Amy and Lutcher both have great chances to win the state championship in 3A. Uh, best matchup, I think the 22 Bruley at the 11 Berwick. I mean, that's an enticing matchup. Two teams that are, I think, evenly matched. Eric Holden's done a really good job in his first year at Berwick. And... You know, Berwick only lost to Kaplan and a good Erath squad this year. And, of course, Bruley, they lost to the likes of West Feliciana, Parkview Baptist, and University High. So they've been in tough. This is a really good matchup. As we move on to Class 2A, uh, you know, this is this is one of those that's getting a little bit of uh, criticism, if you will. There's a, you know, an 0-10 team in the bracket here and part maybe maybe really the, uh, the poster child, if you will, for what has happened in terms of uh, the split and the brackets and the you know just the fact that that everybody is just about involved uh, in, in this different playoff system. Well, I think the story in 2A is the fact that Madison Prep got declared a non-select school. So they're the two seed, and in my mind, I think they're the team to beat. I think Manny is extremely well coached. Jess Curtis does a great job, and they're very good, and they're a legitimate Superdome team. I think it will end up being Manny and Madison Prep. And Madison Prep, physically, I think, is the best team in the class. And a lot of people are wondering, why are they in the non-select class? Well, that's the way they got classified. So they go where they tell them to go, and that's it. But you're right. There's a lot of bad teams in this bracket. There's a lot of bad teams in the 1A bracket. And, you know, I detail that at sportsnola.com. Uh, the playoffs are a sham in terms of the way it's structured. There's too many teams playing and teams that don't belong there. So you can read my piece on the website about that. Best matchup, the 18th seed Mangum at the 15th seed Red River. Uh, the Dragons are 5-5, five and five, but they're a lot better than their record. Plus, they're accustomed to being deep into the playoffs each and every year. The problem is they've lost four straight games entering the playoffs. Now it was against tough competition. Can they get their mojo back because of who they've played, because of where they've been? I think they're a very live underdog. And then we go to Class 1A, the the one team in southeast Louisiana that I guess jumps off the page uh, would be Kentwood. Uh, can can somebody you know keep keep the Kangaroos from from getting to the dome where they've been so many times before? Well, Haynes, Haynesville's the number one seed, and they've deserved it. They're undefeated. It's a traditional power, and they're a really good football team, no question in my mind, uh, that they should make it to the dome. Uh, Kentwood is a football team that lost to Southern Lab in convincing fashion in Week 10, but Southern Lab's elite. That's no shame in that. So certainly I think they have a great chance uh, to get back to that level. And, and again, when you're looking at 1A, I don't see anybody that can really uh, surprise you. I just don't see it. I mean, Arcadia is a good football team. Varnado's a good 6-3 and three team based upon who they've played this year. Uh, you know, So to me, I don't see any real surprises there. Uh, the best matchup? I got a 21 and a 12. I got Delhi, even though they're three and seven at Tensaw. Now keep in mind that Delhi is better than its record. They had to forfeit a couple of games, so the record's kind of deceiving, and therefore I think it's very, very possible. And you know they beat Tensaw. It's a rematch game. They beat them earlier this year, 41 to 24. So. That's a live underdog in the 21 there. Yeah, and, and look, that's one of the things about this, and we've seen it before. We saw it happen with Acadiana where they had to forfeit some games a few years ago and it played to their advantage. Yeah, yeah, you, you're a lower seed and you got to travel, but you you got a chance to knock somebody off and then maybe get a chance to play a home game in the second round against right. a good team. It, it's one of those things that if it doesn't knock you out completely, can play to your advantage. All right, now let's shift gears to the select side. Uh, four divisions. Uh, all working off a 16-team bracket, although, again, there are some buys in Division One and Division Two, And we'll start with Division One, where obviously there, there's such significant local interest. John Curtis is the number one seed. Uh, a lot of those Catholic League schools right in the middle of the bracket, including, of course, that 8-9 matchup we mentioned that we'll have for you Saturday night at Sports NOLA. Well, Curtis earned it. They played a really tough schedule. Their pre-district schedule was second to none, and they beat everybody they played. So they've earned this position, and they went through the Catholic League undefeated to win the title. Turnovers are still something they've got to be a little bit sharper in and not giving the ball away against really good opposition. That could be a problem, but I think they definitely have a chance to win it all this year. Their defense is elite, and I think the freshman quarterback, uh, Guggenheim, has played well enough to, to merit probably the lion's share of playing time, though the two-quarterback system certainly works there. You know, in terms of other teams that can win it, Catholic High has been my number one team in the state all year long because they're the defending champion, and nobody beat them. And they've got Clyde edwards Lair, and they've got Miles, and they've got Moffitt. They've got good players, and they're well-coached, and they've been there, done that. So to me, 
they've still got a great shot to win this. Evangel, unquestionably, uh, they lost to Allen, Texas, top three team in the country, and to Neville, and they've ripped off eight straight, and they've been dominant. Their defense may be the best in the class. Their quarterback, Connor Curry, is really good, so they have a shot. Other dark horse to me is Brother Martin. Their offense is really good. Uh, they're playing well at the right time, and they've been knocking on the door the last couple of years, and now those guys like Jordan Swilling and Swilling and – you know, Singleton are seniors, so this is their opportunity. So I like them. I wouldn't sleep on St. Augustine. Purple Knights have a great quarterback. They're improved. They have confidence. They played a tough schedule, and they got over the hump against Rommel last week, so that's big for them too. So, look, I mean, I see, and then last but not least, uh, St. Paul's. This is a team that I know the skeptics are out there because of what they've done in the playoffs, but this team I think is different than what they've had because they have an athletic quarterback to go along with a good running game and a very good defense. Bottom line is the deep class, and that's uh, it's going to be entertaining to watch as that yeah. plays itself out. The upset special would be Jesuit over Rummel. I mean, it's a rematch game for the third straight year, and they're evenly matched. And obviously, when you get that close and you know each other that well, the upset's quite possible. No doubt about it. We'll anticipate uh, looking at all of those games, five of them this week, and then of course you get into the quarterfinals the following week as we go to Division Two. Uh, is is there a better story this year in Louisiana high school football other than per, perhaps the the ten and zero season of De La Salle and how good they are and coming from where they've come from, you know, to, to get to this point, uh, it's a school that's never won a state championship in football and you know you you may have to stamp them the favorite although this is a very very tough Division two bracket and the reason it's tough is because De La Salle's a three A school and they're competing with four A schools in Division two just by the nature of the class and the way it's broken down so they've got St Thomas Moore who knocked them out last year they got Turlings Catholic who's a four A school and very good in this bracket and of course they got the defending state champion in Parkview Baptist who's very good so there's going to be some tough tests looming uh, university lab cannot be dismissed with the schedule they've played but de la salle is the best football team it's a matter of whether uh, they can overcome the lack of not having been there before they've shown me nothing to indicate that they won't do so the way they handled st james and lutcher uh, barring injury they're the team to beat i think uh, they are the best team in the class and we'll see if they're able to to get it done look Bottom line is that, uh, you know, again, when you got the teams that we're talking about with St. Thomas Moore and Turlings and Parkview Baptist, you got really good teams. I think the best matchup in the class would be St. Michael and University. St. Michael's come on strong. They can score. They've won three of the last four, scored 88 in their last two games. U High's playing better. Their schedule was very, very tough. It's a young team, and they've been there, done that. Good matchup. So we go to Division Three, Again, a bracket with a lot of local interest. Riverside is the number one seed, but you know schools like St. Charles Catholic, Country Day, Newman, all in this bracket as well. Uh, that's uh, makes for it made for some entertaining football as we saw last year. And uh, you know your thoughts on this year. Well, last year this was the best bracket. I mean, this was the deepest and most talented bracket in terms of depth in the bracket, and this year is no exception. Washita Christian is a ninth seed, a ninth seed, and they're nine and one. So, you tell me. You know, Newman's a 12 seed, and with the schedule they play, they're a dangerous team. But they're playing a 9-1 Dunham team who's really good. St. Charles Catholic's 8-2. and two. Who do they lose to? You know, I mean, they lost to Vanderbilt Catholic, a really good team uh, in, you know, Division two, And then they lost, of course, to Riverside. So, that's a really good program. Notre Dame is the chalk. They won it last year. Louis Cook's unparalleled. He's as good a coach, if not the best, in Louisiana. And they're all that again this year. And Riverside's on the other side. I personally would – I see a rematch, personally, uh, when all is said and done. Though, again, you can't sleep on these other teams I mentioned. And then there's Calvary Baptist, who, you know, everybody forgot about them early on because they lost three games and they played a good schedule. So they're good. And, you know, and then, of course, the best matchup to me uh, in the in the class is Holy Savior Menard and Country Day. A couple of eight and two teams that, that beat teams that they were supposed to beat and played competitive against others. Good matchup, and it's an afternoon game on Friday at 2 o'clock. Yeah. Well, Friday matinee for you if you want to go check out some action there. And then finally, Division Four, and you know this is one of those that you these, you know, a lot of times these schools have to play teams that are bigger and you know better and whatever, and and, and things get skewed. We saw it last year with with Southern Lab; they were a six seed in one here. You know they're, you know they're not the number one seed again this year, but what they might be, you know they might be the best team in the bracket, even though the seedings say differently. Well, Ascension Episcopal is really good. They're 10-0, and 0 and they earned it. I mean, they're a good football team, and certainly they have to be considered 
the team to beat based on the way they are other than the best team in the class who's Southern Lab. So, I mean, look, you have to give Ascension Episcopal their props. They're really good, but Southern Lab's the best team. There's no question in my mind that that's the case. And what they did to Kentwood was, I think, a clear indication of just how good they are. So I think those are the two best teams, uh, and I, I just fully expect Southern Lab to win this class and repeat. Uh, Covenant Christian's a good football team. And then, of course, the best matchup to me is a rematch game and another one of those. Central Catholic at Lafayette Christian. Great district game. Lafayette Christian had the biggest win in the young program's history when they beat Central Catholic 46-42 earlier this year. And the reward they get is to face them again in the opening round of the playoffs. Unfortunately, the way it happens too many times. Look, no other place to be than right here at sportsnola.com to get all of the your high school football coverage, a lot of other high school stuff going on this weekend, including the state volleyball championships, the Ponch Train Center. Ken's got the original Friday 6 to 11 on WGSO 990 AM and the entire original network across the state. And once again, those two games, Friday night here at SportsNola.com, we will have Covington at Hanville, And then Saturday evening, the simulcast of the WGSO broadcast, Jesuit and Archbishop Rummel from Joe Yanni. Ken, I know this is your favorite time of the year. Enjoy it. I'm looking forward to it, Lenny. Thank you. And that is our special edition of the first NBC Bank video update previewing the first round of the high school football playoffs. Our thanks to first NBC Bank. And again, stay with us right here at sportsnola.com. No other place to get all of your coverage this high school football weekend.